Hello and welcome to Raj Sabha TV. You're watching discussion today with your host Rajat Kane. Well, in this episode of the show, we'll talk about steps taken by the government to curb digital fraud. The rising concern over the pesky calls, fraudulent digital transactions over mobile phones and above all, making digital transactions safe and secure. Well, for this purpose, a nodal agency named Digital Intelligence Unit or DIU will be set up. That's what the government has declared. A provision of rupees 15 1,000 crore has been made for this proposed scheme in this year's budget and the modalities of the working of this unit, that is Digital Intelligence Unit, are being finalised. Now to discuss more on this uh, important issue, we are joined with our panel of two important guests, Arvind Gupta, he is head and co-founder of Digital India Foundation. Many thanks, uh, Arvind Gupta, for joining us. And we have Kushbu Jain, uh, she is a cyber expert and, of course, like lawyer practicing in Delhi courts on the issue of cyber crime. Many thanks for joining us, uh, both of you. Let me start with you, uh, Arvindji, first. Uh, how important do you see this move could be termed given the rise of cyber crime? We'll, of course, go into the nitty gritty of cyber crime, especially concerning the fraudulent transaction, but at the outset, the digital intelligence unit, how important this initiative, or rather the step you would term? Uh, so, Rajat, a uh, couple of things we need to be uh, uh, conscious that mm -hmm. what is uh, happening uh, now is that India has become a mobile first, a digital first economy, uh, from a, purely from a digital perspective. Uh, you know, last seven years, uh, from uh, internet penetration of about 14 crores, we are upwards of mm -hmm. 75 crore people on the internet. We have people of, uh, you know, uh, 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 we have people who have, uh, who are probably not alphabetically literate, have become illiterate or started using devices and phones um, as we speak. Uh, the COVID situation uh, mm -hmm. actually accelerated the dig digital adoption. And uh, so wide spectrum of people, wide age groups, uh, wide literacy levels, and with that, of course, um, comes uh, all this digital fraud and digital crime. And uh, that presents an opportunity for uh, operators, organized operators, to, uh, to, you know, uh, to, to con uh, unsuspecting uh, citizens and uh, the, the early uh, migrants to the digital world. Right. Uh, not only early, sometimes very, very seasoned people, as we have seen in the last few months, mm -hmm. have been conned into job offers, have been conned into... Uh, you know, uh, gifts, giving money out. We have seen people um, as uh, very well educated, really uh, thinking they are selling something, but ended up making a payment to uh, to uh, to uh, to all these operators. So, uh, I think it's very very appropriate that to build and get the trust of everybody back uh, uh, into the digital uh, transaction ecosystem that mm -hmm. this DIO is being set up. Trust is going to be a very important thing. And you have to keep in mind, Rajat, that um, more trust brings more, uh, more transactions and people then will become more conversant uh, and, and more, more you know, uh, happy doing the transactions. Second point is that government already had a massive digital literacy program going on. So this, is, this comes on top of that PM Disha, the, uh, mm -hmm. the, uh, the digital uh, literacy program. Uh, so combined with the literacy, which teaches you cyber hygiene and basics of literacy, um, the, the digital intelligence, which really is aiming at uh, targeting organized digital crime and digital fraud and, um, and how to curb that. Uh, uh, so I think it's a very welcome move. It, it will really uh, right. keep giving the right push, uh, protecting mm -hmm. the citizens, empowering them. And, um, and making sure they have a recourse when these digital, organized digital fraud happens. Right, right. That's important. Uh, thanks uh, for your opening remarks. Arvind, we'll certainly come back to you uh, as we explore further this dimension of digital intelligence unit. Uh, Kushbu, to you here, like last year, starting off, of course, like a post-lockdown, we saw, that was an extraordinary situation uh, nonetheless. We saw there was an exponential rise in terms of the users switching to digital mode. Now, as we move towards a lot of other digital modes of transaction and, of course, like business, uh, do you see 
uh, the risk of cybercrime increasing further, especially in terms of transaction, if we, if we uh, say for? Uh, see, I completely agree with you. There has been an exponential growth over switching over, you know, uh, internet for ease of doing business for anything and everything. Uh, your work became your home. Your same system are part of your, uh, mm -hmm. you know, or leisure work, your professional work. And the ways data breach or cyber attacks are happening, our data is, we are so vulnerable that our data is anywhere and everywhere. Uh, so, you know, all the antisocial elements having access to your data uh, creates uh, a little better situation for them, you know, because once you get a call, let's say from X company, X payment gateway, and and uh, and uh, they have little details about you that, okay, this is your date of birth or, or this is your ABC or I'm calling from this, and they have right. a lot of knowledge about your details. So once they have knowledge about your details, you tend to believe in that. And once you tend to believe, you fall prey of it. And you know, as Arvindji was talking about that, uh, even even very literate people f fell prey. You know, in last this entire pandemic, when we're talking about that, is because that we are aware about a slight, uh, you know, uh, to an extent that okay, these are the things banks should not ask. But you know, if mm -hmm. they have more details, that's how you know we are we are restricted ourselves to the telephone, to the internet. So if if we you know we tend to ask ten more security layer questions from the person who makes calls to us or the kind of messages we get. Once we get clarity over that, we think, okay, okay, this is from the bank, and you know we fall prey Absolutely. to those crimes. Yeah. So yes, there would be increase in the crimes, and if you see the penetration, if I just report very uh, basic data which is provided by NPCI, uh, mm -hmm. you know, if you see the September data, they say that there has been a volume of of almost around 180 crores. That was double than 99.9 crores last year, uh, you know, uh, uh, which was recorded in April. So look at the part of April and September data, which is mm -hmm. which is doubling just 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 the payment transactions over over uh, payment gateways. So if, if you see that the way uh, it has been increasing and the way cyber crimes are happening at, at different levels and the kind of data they take of you and, and in the absence of uh, uh, security norms, in the absence of uh, 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 basic standards, which, which, which these platforms have to follow, these banks or other things have to follow, uh, combining these informations through breach mm -hmm. creates a, a very favorable situation for these antisocial elements to commit crime. Right. Kushbu, before I go to Arvind here, let me just ask one more question to you. Uh, now, uh, uh, given the current scenario, and of course, as you elaborate on that, of course, we'll see more and more use of digital technology, which of course can be misused as well. Uh, given the safeguard from the legal point of view, not the technical bit, uh, uh, that surely I'll ask Arvind here, but from the legal point of view, are the tech, I mean, uh, safeguards vis-a-vis uh, -vis the criminal law, uh, are they enough or perhaps more is required so as to curb the menace of cybercrime? See, if you talk about law, we do have law when it mm -hmm. comes to these kind of crimes. We do have uh, uh, guidelines issued by Reserve Bank of India when such right. you know transactions, fraudulent transactions happened in, in different scenarios as to, uh, you know, be... Uh, some act, some fraudulent uh, transaction has happened because of your, uh, 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 you know, mistake or by a third party okay. or at the at the platform stage, at the bank stage or the payment gateway stage. So what happens in all the three scenarios and when do you complain about it? So what are the whose liability is this? See, that's one portion of it. So the other portion comes exactly is okay in in that scenario, bank is the one who's going to repay you. But another side comes as to the criminal side of it that, you know, yeah. if that transaction has happened, what exactly happened? So, yes, we do have law, but problem mm -hmm. happens is enforcement of those laws. So, mm -hmm. I say that, yes, law does exist, but the difficulty comes is the enforcement. Enforcement, uh, to an extent, I would just have few lacunas, jurisdiction, because these transactions are borderless. They are fenceless. Right, so jurisdiction right. plays a very important role. Jurisdiction, not just I'm talking about mm -hmm. uh, different nations, but at the state level also. You know, a transaction happens, let's say I'm sitting in Bombay. My account transaction happens sitting in Bombay. The second transaction that takes place would be in Bhubaneswar. The third one goes to, let's say, uh, you know, uh, any other state in Northeast. And from there, it goes to something in Africa. So let's say a very small amount or a bigger amount. You know, a, a crime is a crime. So for 10,000 rupees, these three things have happened, let's say, in a fraction of minutes. Now, uh, even if I go to the law enforcement and I know that crime has happened and I register a complaint and they also register a complaint under XYZ sections, now what do you do? How do you enforce it? Absolutely, absolutely. That's so, extremely... Yeah, yeah, please, please go on, Kush. Not sorry, law, yeah. but in the enforcement side of it. Well, extremely. And of course, like uh, more so enforcement becomes a little tricky as, as you yourself mentioned that these things are sometimes borderless and of course 
sometimes even across the countries. Now, Arvind here, like, uh, 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 given how uh, Kushbu just took us to uh, the challenges in terms of the enforcement, of course, like the vast web, these fraudulent transaction could be extracting so as to have more on that their side. Do you th I mean, uh, 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 would these lacunas be addressed by uh, uh, the new digital intelligence unit that is still under preparation? See, I foresee the digital intelligence unit to really look uh, into the issues of organized uh, digital syndicates okay. working and uh, trying to uh, either take uh, you know money off you by putting malware into your computers right. or uh, doing trickery. And I can give you many uh -huh. examples. See, you asked a question to Kushbu about um, what is uh, the legal, legal uh, aspect and yeah, enforcement. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But really, where does how does the crime originate? How does mm -hmm. fraud originate? Number one is, it's, uh, I, and I think that's the biggest issue. Number mm -hmm. one is, of course, there is a lack of knowledge. There is a lack mm -hmm. of um, cyber hygiene. We have multiple apps on our phones. They are leaking data. And then right. that data is harvested and used back by some uh, malicious operator who Absolutely. then sends you a saying that, you know, uh, giving you some information which you start trusting and then, you, you know, you, the fraud starts from there. So that's one category is lack of knowledge slash cyber hygiene. But the bigger category is greed and uh, uh, what is uh, what I call a golden principle of my life, there is no free lunch. Mm -hmm. When you go to get an SMS or you get a, a, a thing, free, free COVID test yeah. or uh, va get vaccinated right now, highest amount of malwares are coming Absolutely. into these messengers, into WhatsApps, into your SMSs, or get 10,000 rupees doing nothing. You know, work from home and make a lakh rupees a month. Yeah, that's a new this thing, is, of course. <laughs> you have to question yourself. <laughs> yes, absolutely. That uh, is there a free lunch? I mean, uh, how can I just invest 5,000 rupees and then make a lakh rupees without doing anything? Right. And if everybody could do that, why is this person sharing it with me? So there is the two categories. And then the second category, the shame is so high that mm. most of the people don't end up reporting it because they, they carry the guilt that they, they were the ones who were trying to make a free money. So it was, you know, they bought a lottery ticket not knowing it was not a lottery ticket. Hmm. So the Nigeria 419 scams are all harvesting this, you know, social phenomena that people rarely go and report them. Hmm. Now, the DIU that is being proposed and talked about is to curb this kind of organized effort. Okay. And, and really then go after uh, syndicates. Uh, who gave a very good example. I, I'll, mm -hmm. I'll share, extend that example. I mean, a transaction happens in Mumbai, but really, if you go and you find out the mobile calls and the, the wallet numbers that are associated with are sitting in some Naxal belt, and they've got mm -hmm. a new, new, new modus operandi now is to, you know, is to work out of, um, uh, you know, remote areas, you know, uh, unreachable areas really. And they, how do you enforce that then? Yeah. So the DIU will have to make sure that there is a very, very strong uh, blacklisting and, you know, uh, 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 proactive tracking and then uh, can, can prevent such things. But also at the end of it, technology is not the only solution. Technology cannot prevent all, all such fraud. It's not the, I think, hum, uh, you know, we as Internet users, as digital mm -hmm. transactors have to be very conscious on this. Literacy will play a very, very important role. Mm, absolutely. And well, less greed. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely, and literacy will definitely play a big role, as you said. Kushbu, uh, as we have more and more apps in our phones, in our iPads, and of course, like any other digital wear that we use at home or in offices, and now these apps, of course, we all know, they, uh, they mine and of course harvest data. So would DIU would be able to address problems arising out of these apps? So once again, uh, we'd be having issues regarding jurisdiction that we very often see with the existing agencies sometimes trying to find data or trying to at least trace any proceeds of crime through these apps? Uh, see, very good question. So, so uh, uh, you know, the existence or the need of having a digital intelligence unit is because of, you know, all these lacunas which we were facing, which RBI was mm -hmm. facing, which, you know, the entire system was facing, whereas digital uh, fraud or crimes are concerned. So the main objective which I see about this DIU is to coordinate between different law enforcement agencies, 
financial institutions, telecom mm-hmm. service providers uh, in investigating any fraudulent activity which involves these kind of issues. Uh, so I would say that it's it's a one stop shop for you to you know practically you know when we talk about syndicate crimes or larger crimes which Sir was mentioning about. So it's it's you know in order to have uh, to understand the nexus and in order to have that there, there is a need for a nexus between all the enforcement agencies and right. different departments to to clearly to to you know to solve this at at, at a, a in a, in a proper manner rather than you know picking up one one small case and going to the police station and you know that has been there and they are handicapped in order to technology in order with you know the law uh, enforcement of the law they are handicapped at that moment so instead mm-hmm. of having that small issue and the and 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 we talk about transactions if if you look at the same you know annual report of RBI the kind of uh, uh, you know the number which annual report of RBI talks about is that they received a complaint related to digital transactions in 1920 which is almost which has grown up to 113 percent from as compared to you know a previous year that is somewhere around 137,823 complaints they have received mm-hmm. uh, in 1920 as compared to 64,607 complaints in the in the previous year right. so if you see such kind of a rise in the complaint and i'm just talking about the complaints which have been registered let's not go to the part where people do not register uh, complaints where people uh, 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 face difficulties in registering complaints where the mm-hmm. amount is so small that people feel let's not go for it let's just forget about it uh, so you know just just, just the reported complaints, whereas RBI ombudsman is concerned, this is the number which we are seeing. So looking at this number, I think we, there was a high time that there was a requirement uh, for, for, you know, a dedicated uh, intelligence unit which works in this area mm-hmm. and which coordinates with all the all the entities uh, in order to solve it at, at, a, at a very nascent and in a, in a, uh, in a holistic manner. Mm-hmm. Arvind, let me pick your thoughts on it. I mean, what do you have to say? Uh, would a uh, digital intelligence unit would be having the same issues that we're having with a uh, current investigating agency in terms of jurisdiction whenever issues of data considering a particular app or for that matter, these apps are concerned? That's uh, Thankfully, we have, uh, uh, you know, uh, the, the IT uh, is, a, uh, is a national uh, subject uh, mm-hmm. it applies because it is borderless within the country. Of course, mm-hmm. it's borderless outside the country, and then there yeah. is a lot of MLADs and other treaties that come into play. I'm not going to talk about it. Sure. I think uh, the you know uh, international fraud happens in a much much more organized way, where your credit card skimming happens, and then this mm-hmm. data is sold, and then you know many countries who don't have two-factor authentication, suddenly you'll find your credit card being used in Australia and mm-hmm. Malaysia and all. But those that's a that's a separate uh, topic. I think more transactional, the hundred and fifty thousand. Uh, complaints that finally reach the RBI will be very local in nature. If you analyze 99.9% of them will be concerning uh, Indian citizens within India and mm. um, transactions not getting completed or uh, money that was to be paid has been actually reversed from their accounts and, 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 and you know, uh, uh, OTP fraud where they've got the OTP skim, uh, SIMs have been cloned. And, and all this requires a different set uh, this is not standard cyber crime. It, it's a subset yeah. of cyber crime. Requires a different skill set, mm-hmm. and I think the government had in the previous budget also talked about a FinCert, and I think the DIU is an extension of that. Where um, for the financial intelligence, the the cyber security related to financial transactions is is, is prioritized, and this very few countries do that today. Right? Mm-hmm. And once you do that, it, as I said, I started with saying this, it brings trust, a lot more trust back into your transaction, the digital transaction, the digital economy. And I think this is a very proactive move which will help uh, the country reach greater heights. The $1 trillion digital economy, uh, the, the you know, um, 20% of our GDP as a target will be much faster reached. Uh, the efficiencies of digital will reach every single citizen of India if there is more trust. And a DIU just enables that trust. Hmm. Right. So trust is an important factor, as you've, you emphasized earlier as well. Kushbu, as we are about to wrap up the show, uh, let me ask just one last question to both of you. Uh, to you first, uh, in terms of uh, our investigating agencies, and of course, like you, you mentioned about the law, the legal safeguards, but officers or those people who actually work in cracking these cyber crimes, how Usually, you have seen them being equipped with the knowledge or know-how to deal with this crime. 
Okay, so uh, knowledge, yes, they are very much knowledgeable, uh, equ equipped. Yes, you are uh, equipped, but not to an extent. Uh, you know, uh, these are very bigger nexus. We are not talking mm -hmm. about one small crime that happened over here, as as we're talking about their syndicate, their 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 international gangs, their national gangs, properly sitting at some remote areas. You know. Uh, uh, it's it's becoming so cheap nowadays to perform such kind of an act, you know, uh, that things are available over internet at a very, it's very, it's very cheap. Cost is very, very small. So, you right. know, they are very much well aware and uh, uh, it's, it's a proper uh, mechanism. So I would not say that we are not, our, our officers or our law enforcement agency is not equipped, mm -hmm. but uh, uh, technology and uh, modus operandi that changes every day, they are becoming very fast. So the mm. way that that's been transforming and changing it, uh, uh, it becomes difficult to reach to that level and, you know, to continue with that. So I would say that, you know, at the local level, solving these crimes is, is one or two cases, 10 cases, 20 cases. That doesn't solve our purpose. Our purpose is to have a centralized, uh, uh, you know, national unit which takes care of it. And if something is happening in a syndicate manner, which is there, stop it there rather than having one case of, you know, specific bank, one of payment gateway, solve it and get it done. That might happen, that might not happen looking at each case basis. And people might get their money from the gateways or payment gateways or from the bank. But the issue lies that uh, at the core that why is this happening, A, and how it can be solved or, you know, pick up the main syndicate over there and crush it from that level. Mm. So that is which where, where is required. And also there is a need. I mean, there have been a lot of uh, uh, um, training that happens to law enforcement agencies from okay. experts from all level to understand the motors, to understand what technology they are using it, how they are going it. But it's changing. It's, 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 it's at the speed of light, I would say, you know, the, how it has been happening. So same has to happen, whereas our, our enforcement agencies is concerned. And I see DIU as one of... Uh, 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 the advancement in in that line. Apart from that, I would say that it's not just enforcement agencies. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, it's it's you know other things also that there has to be a there is a lack of redressal mechanism or uniformity in the practice across all these entities, these banks or payment gateways, which makes um, you know a matter of concern because people are ambiguous how this happens or what happens or what bank has to do or not has to do. So there has to be a, a, a you know uh, everything has a uh, there are uh, two sides to the coin. One is enforcement. Mm -hmm. Side of it, law side of it. The second side is that have some. Uh, there are gaps and concerns, whereas these uh, entities are concerned. So why not have a proper redressal mechanism or uniformity Absolutely. practice for them? Apart from that, you need to have a uh, delineation in regards to roles, responsibilities uh, for the merchants or customers. Clarity for them. You know what exactly how reporting has to be done, how it has not to be done. There is a lot of uh, 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 ambiguity and every bank has a different way of doing right. things. Uh, right. Even after RBI giving guidelines, so I think that's, it's high time that we need to align all the systems and have a proper proper system at all level. Right, right. Kushu, many thanks. Uh, Arvind, just like last point to you, do we have enough to drizzle mechanism? And of course, like tools of investigation, are they enough that we have today? I think... Uh, it's always a, uh, we have, uh, you know, the intent, the intent is there, the knowledge is there, mm -hmm. but the capacity uh, cannot match the volumes of digital transaction. And a subset of that is fraud. Um, mm. And, you know, a lot of times, um, uh, 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 you know, preventive things are not happening. It's mostly in, uh, enforcement post facto rather than preventive. So a DIU can go in an organized manner, in a preventive manner, rather than just only a, in a, investigative and a post effect manner. So I think we right. have to look at that. Uh, just to uh, give you my last thoughts, Absolutely. Uh, you know, yeah. five years Please ago on. Uh, on the UPI, let's say, just to use it as a benchmark, we were doing mm -hmm. 100,000 transactions, one lakh transactions a month. Uh, last month, we finished with 230 crore transactions. So when the volumes are so big, uh, you know, you need, a, you need a specialized agency, which basically brings about more capacity. Uh, more than anything else. The current capacity may be stretched to the limit. Well, many thanks, uh, Arvind Gupta, and many thanks, uh, Kushpu Jain, for elucidating this extremely important aspect. And of course, like what lies ahead, as you yourself said, that sometimes these transactions can be at a speed of the light. And of course, the world of cybercrime is fairly vast. However, we have a hope that DIU would be able to address all these issues in terms of tackling cyber crime. Well, many thanks to all our viewers for watching this edition of Discussion Today. Stay safe, thank you, and goodbye.